Daria here, she's with WHBS. She's gonna be filming tonight. It will be for viewing later on once they edit it. So a round of applause for WHBS and Daria. And we have Moira over here, a student photographer, helping us out. Give her a big round of applause. Feel free to grab her and take photos with whomever you would like to take photos with. Um, we will then end up getting all the photos and we'll make sure that you have them. Uh, if you want a Christmas card, take off your name tag and it uh, turns into a great Christmas card. Um, I want to thank all of our sponsors. We have a great list of sponsors in our book. Make sure you guys check them out in the, the program. You will also see them up on the screen. And then um, we are very lucky to have a very supportive school system that uh, enjoys and appreciates all the things that alumni does. One being that he has installed a new position a, a few years ago, which is mine. A, a career, uh, a career, I looked right at her and I said career, an alumni coordinator. And so we're very lucky to have our school board and Dr. Goggin here tonight. And Dr. Goggin's going to come up and say a few words about our great school system and city. I don't know if it might be easier, so you're not. It's fine. I'll take okay, it. Okay, good. Thank you, Megan. Uh, I do just have a few words, but before I get to them, uh, I do want to thank our um, Hall of Fame organization, our alumni organization. Um, Megan Matu, as she mentioned, is um, our liaison to the uh, Alumni Association. And this is an association that is very important to the Westlake City Schools because we know we exist because of you and then the people who are there now. So um, we love to have that connection with our alumni, and, and I still, and I saw Mary Beth Schneider as I look over here, and I remember showing up in 2016 where Mary Beth was one of the first people to meet with me and sat me down and gave me the entire history of uh, uh, Dover and Westlake, and um, she at the time was uh, the person holding together the Alumni Association, and I knew it was something that we wanted to foster and grow. And while the school did contribute, you have people um, who are part of that alumni association, Jim Leach was mentioned, uh, as well as Megan and, and the others in there who are really driving this. And we greatly appreciate what they do. Um, and by the way, just looking at this place, guys, great job. This place looks beautiful. So um, really, each year out doing yourself. So I do have a few words prepared that I would like to share. I'm one of those people who have to take off their glasses to read. Um, so I'd like to start by saying good evening and congratulating our honorees this evening. We're very proud of your association with the Westlake City School District and we are grateful for all that you have contributed to who we are today. We have a number of events throughout the school year. To me, some of them are connected. When it comes to alumni, I think about our commencement ceremony, homecoming, and this Hall of Fame event. On your commencement or graduation day, that is where our alumni are created. That's the day when you take that next step. Homecoming and this Hall of Fame celebration are times when those alumni return. In that spirit, I'm going to share with you one of the messages that I shared with last year's graduate. The message, once a demon, always a demon. The people in this room have experienced a lot of life. That's my way of saying world. Um, you, know that, you know that this saying is commonly used in other communities, colleges, the military, etc. You hear once a Buckeye, always a Buckeye, once a Marine, always a Marine. All of those are true. And it usually describes a formative time in our lives and symbolizes how that time helped shape who you are today. <clears throat> However, I believe there's more. The phrase also is an example of the impact you have had on us. The fact that you are part of the Westlake City Schools matters. In your time, you've made an impact on who we are as a district. Our students can look at you as, and see an example. And if you came to Westlake High School, you could see your faces in the students we have today. Finally, 
This statement is a pledge from demon to demon, support each other on the journey we call life. It's also a pledge from us, the Westlake City Schools and the Westlake community to you. You may have moved to another community or another part of the world. However, here in Westlake, you're always welcome. Why? It's simple. Because once a demon, always a demon. Welcome home, alumni, and congratulations to this year's honorees. All right. This past year, Mary Beth, Kevin, uh, Hillary, and Joe, and many others were instrumental in getting a new piece commissioned in honor of Thomas Hill. You can find the link on our website to hear the beautiful song performed, or the composition performed on our website. In honor of Thomas Hill tonight, we are going to have a Reinhard Liebig, Mary Beth Schneider, Kevin Stuber, I don't know if Hillary and Joe would like to go join them in the back. We're going to go ahead and sing the alma mater. It is on the back of your program. I think I'm going to walk the microphone down to them. Next time I'm going to interview Stella Yamalas. Thank you. My name is Della Yamas, class of 81. I have three younger sisters who graduated in the 80s, two nieces who graduated from the last two years, and my parents graduated from Los Angeles in 1959, so we have a legacy. I've been asked to do the invocation tonight, so we can all Bow our heads and pray. Dear God, as we join together to eat and drink and celebrate this year's class of Western Alumni Hall of Fame inductees, please bless our conversations and interactions so that old bonds are renewed and new bonds are formed. We thank you for this food we are about to encounter, the hands that prepared it and serve it and will clean it up. May it nourish our bodies and souls so that we might further the work of your kingdom. We ask that you bless our future alumni, the current students of Westlake City Schools, that they persevere in their studies, that they make fast friends and form strong relationships that will last a lifetime, and that they are receptive to the advice and counsel of their parents, families, teachers, coaches, administrators, and community leaders. We ask your blessing of good health and prosperity for all of the alumni of Dover and Westlake High Schools. Also, please bestow your blessings on all in attendance here this evening, and in a special way the 20 23 class of inductees into the Westlake Alumni Hall of Fame, that we may continue to find ways to encourage and inspire future generations of graduates so that they may make a positive difference in this world, however small or large it may be. We pray that you bless those alumni and inductees that have departed this world to join you in your heavenly kingdom. We pray especially for Reverend Bill Montgomery and Jim Ryan Mueller, who are both very key contributors to the sex success of the 1983 football team, and also for past Hall of Fame inductee and longtime Westside educator and music director and author of the Westside High School alma mater, Thomas Hill. Let us now remember these individuals and others who have passed that may be personally near and dear to us with a moment of silence. Lastly, we marvel at the wonders of your kingdom, especially how the changes of seasons and changes in weather help complete the circle of life. Please keep us safe in our travels tonight, whether they take us near or far, as we experience some of these changes firsthand. We ask all of this in your name. Amen.
Um, that's a lot of demon pride uh, and a lot of green and white. So thank you all for coming. Appreciate it. I also thought we did a pretty good job on the alma mater, so uh, that was good. Thank you, Kevin and uh, Mary Beth and Reinhardt back there. On behalf of the Board of Trustees and the Hall of Fame Committee, I wanted to welcome everybody to the 2023 Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Before we begin the formal part of our program, I have several announcements and acknowledgments that I want to make. First is, I want to thank Mo Salem, who is the owner, their family is the owner of La Center. He's a Westlake grad. He wrestled at Westlake and he really wanted us here and we're really glad to be here. So thank you, Mo, wherever you're at. I think there he is in the back. And if you have other events, come to Mo, because I can tell you he works with you and it's great. It really is. Next, I also want to thank Dell for the invocation. Um, I want to thank Tom Liebig, um, who's on our Board of Trustees as well. Dell's on our Board of Trustees for the videos that have been up and the pictures along the way. So I think that's been great. So thank you, Tom. Thank you, Dell. I want to thank Reinhard Liebig back there on the piano. I think that was a great touch. Uh, and I think it's been really nice to have the piano. I want to thank Mary Beth Price Schneider, if you raise your hand, Mary Beth. She's in charge of homecoming tomorrow for the inductees and things like that. So thank you, Mary Beth. Also in the program is our Board of Trustees are listed and the Hall of Fame Committee. I'm not gonna take the time to say their names, but if you're on the Hall of Fame Committee or on the Board of Trustees, will you quickly stand so that people at least know who you are? Board of Trustees, Hall of Fame Committee. I know we have more than two, so there, there we go, there we go. I also want to thank our sponsors. So this year, we've the last couple of years, we've had sponsors for the event. They've been coming up on the uh, side um, uh, programs up there. They're in your program. Um, all of them are tied to Westlake in one way or another. It's, we list the companies, but there's alums behind every single one of them. Tonight, through this event and the donations that were made through the sponsorship, we'll probably raise over $10,000 for Westlake scholarships. And I really want to thank everyone as far as our sponsors. Also, Megan thanked me and I want to thank Megan. So she really is, she does lights out. She, I know I bug her a lot, but uh, we couldn't do this event without Megan Matu. So thank Megan Matu, our alumni coordinator. Before I begin the formal introductions, we have 13 people here that are previous inductees. I'm gonna quickly read their name. Please hold your applause. I'm gonna read their name and the year they were inducted. I'd like them to stand and remain standing till all 13 are, are read. Here we go. Mike Antonician, 2016. Bob Clancy, 2016. Doug Dake, 1997. Jen Doherty, 2016. John Colasar, 1995. Jeff Katerba, 2022. Ken Kripop, 2017. Vern Long, 2020. Stephen Schill, 2019. Mary Beth Schneider, 1997. Joe Schofield, 2018. Jeff Short, 2022. And Kevin Stuber, 2022. 13 here, congratulations and thank you for coming. Now we're gonna move into the highlight of the evening, which is the inductions. The one comment I wanna make before we begin is this. There are three categories that people are um, inducted under, and what makes Westlake unique is this. This is not just an athletic, it's part of the school in total. So there are three categories. There are people that are recognized as distinguished Westlake graduates who distinguish themselves in their life's endeavors and have brought honor and pride to Westlake High School. There are honorary inductees. These are non-Westlake graduates who have contributed as teachers, coaches, and administrators to the success of our school system and our community. And then the last grouping is, West, is athletic, and it's Westlake grads who have excelled in sports 
mostly in high school. So those are the three categories that we honor people tonight. So let's start with our program. The format of our program will be this. We have a senior student. We started this three years ago. They will read the bio that's in your program and they will introduce the inductee. They'll also share some comments about themselves as seniors. And we're trying to connect the school system to the graduates. So I'll read each of the seniors' names. They'll come up and introduce each of the inductees and then each inductee will share their comments. So let us begin with our first. There's Grace over there. Grace Lavecchia will introduce Dr. Mark Deerho. Grace? My name is Grace Lavecchia and I'm a senior and I plan on attending a four-year university to major in biology and hope to become a PA. Uh, it is my pleasure to provide the following about our 2023 inductee, Mr. Dark Mark Deerhoy. Dr. Mark Deerhoy was a 1970 graduate of Westlake High School. Mark was one of the top students in his class. During high school, Mark was involved with the student government, class officer, drama club, the green and white, panorama yearbook, and was on the tennis team. He attended Northwestern University as an undergraduate for medical school and his residency. Mark then received a prestigious appointment to John Radcliffe University Hospital in Oxford, England. Upon his return, he received a transplant fellowship at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, then joined the faculty of the Department of Surgery at the University of Alabama at Birmingham in 1986, where he would work for the next 34 years, performing almost 2,500 kidney transplants. Mark unfortunately passed away in 2020 and is truly missed. Mark's wife is Gwen and they have three children. Please welcome to the podium, Rhiannon and Reed, Mark's oldest daughter, to accept her dad's induction into the Westlake Hall of Fame. Good evening, everyone. Um, I, I'm sure if my dad was here, he would um, share all about how Westlake was so important in his life and name a bunch of people that were instrumental in his time. Uh, since he's not here, I'm gonna talk about him. <laughs> I hope that's okay. Um, and I wanted to start off by thanking Grace for the introduction. Um, and as you may already know, Deerhoy is not a common name, commonly mispronounced, but not common. And if you meet a Deerhoy in this country, they are most certainly related to my family. The uniqueness of our name is something that we've always taken great pride in. But in 2020, the name took on additional importance for us with the loss of my dad. And it's now one of the many ways in which we remain connected to him and carry on his legacy. A few of his well-known accomplishments, some of which Grace already highlighted, he was a doubles tennis champion at Westlake, graduating at the top of his class and crediting his teachers for his academic success and his drive. He finished undergraduate and medical school in six years and then followed that with a surgical residency all at Northwestern. He completed two fellowships, one in Oxford, England and one in Madison, Wisconsin, before becoming a transplant surgeon at the University of Alabama at Birmingham, where he had an endowed professorship named after him performed nearly 2,500 transplants, and created dialysis access for several thousand patients in his more than 34-year career. There's an urban legend in the transplant world that who is Mark Deerhoy is the correct question for the Jeopardy answer, the surgeon who has performed the most kidney transplants in the world. It's unverified. But. Some of his lesser known, but no less impressive accomplishments, the ability to peel an orange in one piece, making a mean chocolate souffle, converting my husband into an Alabama football fan, <laughs> and beating the computer game Mist without guides or any cheat codes. But as Mr. Ralston said in the movie Citizen Kane, it isn't enough to tell us what a man did. You've got to tell us who he was. And given that my dad was a movie buff, I find it only fitting to use movie quotations from some of his favorite films to tell you a little bit more about the kind of person that he was and how that made him more accomplished than any of his professional accolades. Dad was an avid gardener, spending sunny weekend afternoons at the nursery buying new seasonal flowers and tending his plants with loving care. He was known, so known for his yard that a neighbor gifted trimmings from his hydrangea bushes to my sister Laura and my brother Tyler and me, trimmings which now grow in our own yards. Gerald O'Hara says to his daughter Scarlett in Gone with the Wind, land is the only thing in the world worth working for, worth fighting for, worth dying for, because it's the only thing that lasts. I think he loved gardening, not only because it allowed him to do something else with his hands, other than the technical and highly complex surgeries that are performed every day, but also because he took great pride in the home that he and my mother had built together. He was an amazingly patient teacher. I hear on the regular from colleagues who talk about 
training under him and how patient he was and remember his gentle demeanor and how he never got mad at anybody in the operating room but himself. And he never lost sight of why he chose medicine as his career. Absolutely everything he did was for the benefit of his patients. At the end of Return of the King, as Samwise Gamgee holds Frodo, who has been nearly consumed by the power of the ring while climbing Mount Doom, he says, I can't carry it for you, but I can carry you. Dad couldn't take on the pain of his patients, but he did all that he could to carry them through to the life-saving miracle of transplant. Dad was a voracious reader and wanted to learn everything about every topic, much like Lilu Dallas in The Fifth Element, as she consumed the sum total of human history and lightning speed. But he was humble and unassuming about his knowledge. We tried to get him to come out to trivia on more than a few occasions, but he always insisted that the answers were buried so deeply in his brain that he worried that he wouldn't be able to recall them fast enough to be competitive. He wasn't just humble, though. He was authentic. He always made you feel like he had all the time in the world to discuss your questions or problems. And one of his favorite things to do in a new city, whether traveling for work or with our family, was walking everywhere to get his bearings in the feel of the city. And he loved walking his dog, Maisie. Dad was also a Francophile, proud of having studied French at Westlake and traveling to France on several occasions. The quirky French film Amelie was another one of his favorites. In that film, Monsieur Dufayel says, luck is like the Tour de France. You wait and it flashes past you. You have to catch it while you can. Although Dad was fortunate to have many of the experiences that he did, he worked hard every day for them, and he made his own luck. He would challenge all of you to do the same if he was here. He was a family man, excuse me, proud of his parents, Bill and Peggy, unwavering in support of his siblings, Michael and Sarah, devoted best friend and partner in adventure to my mom, Gwen, nurturing and encouraging dad to my sister, Lauren, brother Tyler and me, loving father-in-law to Brandon, Stephen and Katie, an adoring granddad to Ophelia, my daughter. Two more grandchildren have joined the family since his departure, but Gemma and Otto are already learning about their granddad and the amazing man he was. So on behalf of my family, my father's colleagues, the many patients whose lives he touched, and my dad, we are sincerely grateful to you for acknowledging and remembering him in this way. Thank you for this honor. And here's looking at you, Dad. Well, thank you. I'll now introduce Caleb McCann. There's Caleb McCann, and he's going to introduce John Kirikawa. Hello, my name is Caleb McCann. I'm a senior, the vice president of the band, a member of Jazz One, and dance captain of Company D. It is my pleasure to provide the following information about our next 2023 inductee, Mr. John Kirikawa. John graduated from Westlake High School in 1990. John is being recognized for his outstanding achievement in music. While a student at Westlake High School, Mr. Kurakawa was a member of Symphonic Band, Jazz Band, and Pep Band. John received superior ratings on all solo performances at the Ohio Music Education Association. He holds degree, degrees from Bowling Green State University and from the University of Cincinnati College Conservatory of Music. John is currently a lecturer of clarinet at Wright State University. He is the principal clarinetist of the Dayton Philharmonic Orchestra and the Cincinnati Chamber Orchestra. John is recognized as a Yamaha performing artist, which is only bestowed to, on those individuals who are critically acclaimed in their instrument. Please give a round of applause for our, our Hall of Fame inductee, Mr. John Kurakawa. I still can't believe I'm standing here, but then again, if you had told me back in 1990 when I was in high school that one day I would hold down a principal clarinet position in a full-time orchestra for 29 years and counting, as well as a full-time university teaching position at the same time, or have many, many opportunities to perform as guest principal clarinetist with major metropolitan orchestras such as the Cincinnati and St. Louis symphonies, and that I would need reading glasses, I would have told you that you were crazy. But here we are, and I would like to express my appreciation to a number of people. To my family. I know having taught as an adjunct at the University of Dayton for 10 years, and after that as a full-time professor and applied clarinet instructor at Wright State University for another 10 years, that family support is essential. And I have 
a great one. So thank you to my parents, Kenji and Misao Kurakawa, my sister Amy, and my aunts Jackie, Karen, and Nancy for your unending support for going to all of those concerts, driving me to countless rehearsals, providing so many lessons, instruments, and supplies, and enduring my endless practicing. Also to my wonderful band director for many years here at Westlake High School, Mr. Tom Beck, who ran a top-notch band program, believed in me, and provided so many performance opportunities as well as his mentorship. I'd also be remiss if I didn't mention Tom's wife, Carol, who was the most gracious collaborative pianist despite all the gobs of incredibly difficult music I threw at her for solo and ensemble contest every year for multiple instruments. Thank you, Carol. I also wouldn't be standing here if my classmate, Laurel Lloyd, herself a professional musician and trumpet player, had not nominated me, so thank you, Laurel. Finally, thank you to Jim Leach, Mary Beth Schneider, Schneidler, the board, and the committee. I deeply appreciate all of your communication and personal touch during this process. Thank you. Westlake High School's current band director, Hillary Patriarch, was generous enough to invite me back to Westlake High School to do a clinic and master class with the band's clarinet section a number of years ago. It warms my heart to see such a beautiful performing arts facility at our alma mater and so much talent, both in the bands and their directors. Coincidentally, Joe Fudali, the assistant band director here, is the grandson of my dad's band director when he was in high school. As I always tell my students, it's a small world, and the older you get, the smaller it gets. And like Joe's grandfather, Hillary, my dad, Joe, my aunt, and myself were all clarinet players, so what can I say, we're a proud people. <laughs> One last thing, the idea of Diversity, equity, and inclusion is not just about the color of our skin, orientation, or identity. I'm so glad that tonight it includes our lifelong passions as well. And for me, Westlake High School's band program was the one place in high school I felt accepted and understood. I hope that everyone continues to, to support the band program here, not only because it's a very fine program, and not only because we know students who participate in music perform better academically, and not only because it can open many doors and opportunities for students, but because music teaches our children about friendly competition and collaboration, how to shine as an individual and function as a part of a team, foster responsibility and creativity, the excitement and satisfaction of a job well done, and finally, the joy of sharing with each other and audiences the art, art form we love so much that words alone cannot express. Congratulations to all the inductees tonight, and thank you again for this honor. It means so much. Thank you. Thank you, John, and congratulations. One of the good things about being someone who organizes things, John sent me two videos of him playing. And for a guy that wouldn't know which end of the clarinet to even pick up and blow through, he, it was wonderful. So I really appreciated uh, learning a little bit more about John and hearing his, some of his performances. So congratulations, John. Next up, we're moving into the category of honor, honorary inductee. And I'd like to call on Sarah Pear from, there she is, and she will help us to introduce uh, Coach Gary Simpson. Sarah? Hi, my name is Sarah Pierre and I'm a senior at Westlake High School and a member of the girls cross country and track team. I was a part of the 4x800 2023 state championship team and I'm also the 2022 state runner up in cross country and the 2023 state runner up in the mile and two mile. Most recently, <laughs> Most recently, I committed to continue my academic and athletic career at the University of Virginia starting next fall. Because of this, I'm incredibly humbled and honored to share the following information about our next 2023 inductee, longtime Westlake track and cross country coach for both girls and boys, and the coach who actually started the girls cross country program, Mr. Gary Simpson. Gary Simpson was a city kid from New Jersey who moved to Ohio. He ran track in high school and went on to run cross country and track at Baldwin Wallace University. He broke the BW school record in the half mile and also had the opportunity to run in the national championship race. 
After graduation, Gary started teaching and coaching at Westlake High School in 1972. It was then that he brought his passion and knowledge of running and excelled as a coach. He was the head cross country coach from 1977 until 2006 and head track coach for 17 years. During his time, he helped lead the boys cross country team to six conference titles, the boys track team to three conference titles, and the girls track team to two conference titles. In 1986, the boys cross country team finished sixth in the state, and in 1988, the boys team finished third. In addition to coaching, Gary was an outstanding history and government teacher. He retired in 2007 after 35 tremendous years. Please welcome to the podium our newest member of the Westlake Hall of Fame, Mr. Gary Simpson. Thank you, Sarah. It is so important to be introduced by Sarah, who has become one of the elite runners in the state of Ohio. And as she mentioned her, her statistics, uh, but it's even better than that. She has just become a tremendous and steady athlete. Um, what's been very moving to me tonight is we have had a long tradition in Westlake of cross country and track for many, many years. And how many cross country and track kids and cross country and track coaches are here tonight. And then as we were talking and reminiscing how many of them competed at the state level, competed in the MAC conference for Toledo and Kent and Ohio University, and it's just very, very special because it's been a, just a hallmark of Westlake is having great distance runners. And she's raising the bar to an even higher level, uh, which is very, very special. I would like to thank the committee for all the work they've done. I've been through this whole process. I've been so impressed with the way they were on the ball and taking care of things and even getting memos from Jim this morning about things we needed to do. But it's been very, very, very impressive. And I'm just honored to have been selected as a, an alumni of Westlake High School where I'm just very proud to have served. I'd like to thank my wife and family who've been with me for all this years and for all their support. Larry and I have been married for 52 years. She still rolls her eyes sometimes, like, what was I thinking? Um, but uh, she told people the other day, we were at a uh, cookout, and she said, the happiest years of our marriage is when I was doing my active duty in the military at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. <laughs> uh, but we have two children. Uh, Jenny, who went into the family business and is a school teacher and is currently teaching in Berlin. And that's not the Amish buggy Berlin, that is Berlin with the Reichstag. She's teaching at the American University, JFK School in Berlin. And her son kind of went in the family business also because he became a runner and uh, just recently won his age division at a big race. And he also lives in Germany, uh, working for a company out of Zurich, Switzerland. The special part tonight is I've been sitting here with all these friends and all the, my fellow coaches and I kept thinking, this is what I really miss. You know, you retire and you go back and you worry about which fishing lure you're going to use or something. And instead running into all these people and fellow coaches, it's just been very, very special and I'm humbled and uh, deeply touched. Jim's call last winter uh, to tell me about this kind of opened up a whole floodgate of memories of Westlake. I've been retired since 2007 and kind of had packed the memories away. You, know, you kind of move on and you're doing other things. And I got to admit, Jim, that these memories come roaring back and it's almost like every waking moment something pops up about what something some kid did or a race we won or a race we didn't win. And I'm not sure I ought to thank you for all this or not because it's been a little rough. As Sarah mentioned, I, was, I came out of New Jersey, uh, ran two high school, for two different high schools because we moved, and very weak track programs. You go out, show up for practice. That's my first high school, didn't even have a track. We practiced it back behind the junior high in the dirt, which was a city school. 
So high school practice was just kind of a willy-nilly event. You just showed up and coach said, do whatever you want. And then I showed up at BW. And I'd like to thank four people who were my mentors through all of this. And the first is my college coach, Sparky Adams. And Sparky Adams was old school. He was a tough nut. And there weren't any divisions in those days. So you ran everybody. We ran Bowling Green. We ran Ohio State and that sort of thing. And he was a hard driver and became probably the most important adult ever in my life, other than my family. And I just respect him so much. And uh, taught me to be a t he's the man that sat me down and said, you need to be a teacher and a coach. So after we took care of my military obligations, that's what I decided to do. And he was uh, just a major inspiration to me. I want to mention a couple other Wesley people that were part of my professional growth through mentors. And one is Al Smith, who was the principal at Parkside. And Al Smith, who was in the Hall of Fame, was just a remarkable leader. He could he drove a tough school. He was a real taskmaster. But he also built a faculty that just worked and was a team. And it was just something to watch. And Al remained a close friend of mine for many, many years, coming back every year to work at the Westlake Relays and run the shot put and that sort of thing. And my other two mentors I want to mention uh, are George Christ and Larry Nickel. These are two just were super people. Uh, Larry was uh, my assist Larry's assistant for many years and learned from him how to coach track, first of all. And when George moved into administration, he became um, vacancy, the spot was vacant, and I became cross country coach. But in cross country, there's no assistant coach in those days. So I had the boys' team and the girls' team and me. And George was my guy. And I would go see George. We'd get together regularly. We'd have dinner. He was just so important. And Larry and George were just tremendous coaches. Many of their athletes are here tonight also. And they were also just good people. And that's the kind of thing that all coaches want to be recognized as having been as good people. Just to wrap up, uh, Westlake has had a great history of academics and athletic success. And I'm really proud to have been just a small part of that. Thank you. Thank you, Coach Simpson. Just a funny story, and I, he knows this. In 1972, he comes to Parkside. I come from St. Bernard's to go to Parkside first year. Who's the track coach? Gary Simpson, his first year. We practiced at Clegg Park. We ran around at Clegg Park. That's how we practiced for track. Congratulations. We're now moving into the uh, athletic side of things, and I want to call on Ireland Shea. There she is, and she's going to introduce Kalpana Beach. Ireland, here you go. girls basketball team. It is my pleasure to provide the following information about our next 2023 inductee, Miss Kalpana Beach. Kalpana played multiple sports while at Westlake High School. Volleyball, golf, basketball, and track, where she earned 11 varsity letters. During her four-year basketball career, she became the all-time leading scorer and rebounder in Westlake girls basketball history. Kapana was named to the Southwest Conference All-League team four years. She was the Southwest Conference MVP her junior and senior years. In 2011, was Ohio Girls Basketball Division I Co-Player of the Year, All-Ohio Selection her senior season, and second team honoree her junior year. She participated in track for four years. She also holds the school record for high jump and was the state runner-up. Kalpana attended The Ohio State University to play basketball. Upon her college graduation, she has returned to the area and has worked for the past five years as a financial advisor at Raymond James. Please welcome our newest Hall of Fame inductee, Kalpana Beach. Wow, 
Thank you, Ireland. And thanks everyone for being here tonight. I'll start with my parents, mom, dad. You guys came to all my games, practices, driving across the country for basketball tournaments, track meets, whatever it was, you guys were there. And I realize that not everybody has that kind of support, so that means a lot. So thank you. My grandparents, my uncle, you guys were living in Colorado at the time, but you always found a way to make it back to Ohio and support me in any way that you could. So I really appreciate it. My brothers, Makis, Tariq, Jalen, I'm not sure you guys were old enough to have much say, but you were at all my games and most of my practices growing up. So thank you for that. My boyfriend, Alejandro, my brother's girlfriend, Gigi, We've only known each other for about three years, and I appreciate you guys allowing me to try and explain just how good I was in high school <laughs> and in college. Um, it's not easy to listen to. You guys are the best. My family and I moved from Denver to Westlake when I was in eighth grade. I'd never been to Ohio before, so naturally I was thrilled. <laughs> but if I didn't have such great friends, teammates, and coaches, I would have had a much different experience at Westlake than I did. So thank you to all of you, and go Demons. That was pretty good, I like that. Good job, Kapana, very good. I next wanna call on Liam Walsh, and uh, Liam will come to the stage, and he will introduce our next inductee, Paul Hanna. Liam? My name is Liam Walsh, and I'm a senior at Westlake High School. Uh, I've been the captain of the cross country team for the past two years and I also ran track and played baseball. Um, and it's my pleasure to provide the following information about our 2023 inductee, Mr. Paul Hanna. Paul Hanna graduated from Westlake High School in 1978. He was a three sport athlete at Westlake in football, wrestling, and track and earned seven varsity letters. He was a three year starter in football and in the senior season, Paul was all conference, all district, Plain Dealer All-Scholastic and an All-State Selection. In wrestling, he was conference champ in 1978 and he attended Paul Purdue University where he lettered for four years. Paul then played in 1984 and 1985 in the USFL Professional Football League and had tryouts in the NFL. Paul has also excelled in the business world as the president of Blue Technologies and is involved with countless charities including Ohio Guidestone and Our Lady of the Wayside. Paul is married to Margot and they have four children. Please give a round of applause for our newest Westlake Hall of Fame inductee, Mr. Paul Hanna. First off, I'm very thankful for the many blessings in my life. My wife, Margo, and my children and my grandchildren are on the top of my list. My parents, for many of you, uh, that I have a lot of teammates here, my parents were pretty special to me, and um, I'm really thankful that they moved and we were able to grow up on Concord Drive in Westlake, next to Clay Park. <laughs> so a pretty good time. <laughs> Um, I'm honored to be inducted into the Westlake High School uh, Hall of Fame, and I'm proud of the neighborhood and community that I had the fortune of growing up in. Westlake High School is pretty special, still special. 
under our superintendents even getting better. Thank you, Dr. Cargo. Um, I'd like to th thank Jim Leach and the Alumni Committee uh, for really doing a really good job. And, and I'm glad, that I, I hope I can participate more because it's so good to see so many people. There are a lot of surprise faces in here uh, that I haven't seen in a lot of years, but I have a lot of fond memories. So thank you. Um, and I, I, I'd really like to, there's a few people I do want to point out that were very big influencers in my life. Uh, I wasn't necessarily designed to be uh, a great athlete. I came from a second generation athletic family and I told my dad I was going to play football. And he said, that's for the American kids, go get a job. <laughs> and everybody that knew, that grew up with me knew that. Uh, and then I had the fortune of meeting some people like the Hallways and the Laraways and the Sandas and the Belaks and so many more. And those were like sports dynasties. Pete Hallways, dad coach, played at Kentucky with Bear Bryant. Uh, Jack Laraway's dad played at Purdue, ended up being my, the college I chose, and played with the Houston Oilers. These were athletes. And I got a chance and very privileged to have played with these great players and many of other friends that are here also. Some people I really want to take time to, to thank that were big influencers in my life, though, were uh, Coach Vern Long, a great leader, a great motivator, the longevity, how well respected he is throughout the country was pretty special and stayed in my life even to where unfortunately I missed his wife's awake because I was out of town, but I love that man and a really big influence in my life. Uh, Dave Newman, and as I say this about these guys, I'm only one small part of the impact, the profound impact that they made on people's lives. I can only relate to mine. I know there was many others in this room that were affected also. Dave Newman, he helped mold us physically. Uh, Dirk Schneider and I always get to have some laughs about it. I think, Dirk, you were bragging that you brought him tonight. <laughs> uh, he was such a special person as when you could be a coach. And he was tough. And he taught us integrity and he taught us pride. And to this day, he stays in my mind and I, I, sometimes you, you can't, we don't get a chance to share with them how special they were for us. Uh, Jerry Miller, who texted me today, is in Pennsylvania, a wrestling coach, a big impact. And, and I don't know how much they were paying him, but he used to wrestle a lot with me, and I was like 100 pounds heavier than him. And I, I, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> and then I get to the next person, Bob Stanley, who is here. How much were they paying you, Coach, uh, Mr. Stanley, Coach Stanley? <laughs> They were paying me a lot of money. I wager, I wager by 100 pounds. And he'd get in there and do drills and uh, never complain. And it was pretty special. Uh, Mike Antonition, who at that time was a great coach, the wrestling coach, and everybody knows Mike and loves Mike. Uh, but he was at, at Lee Burnison at the time. He'd come over and wrestle because I didn't have anybody to wrestle with. And he, although I played football and I probably got more name recognition in football, I actually liked wrestling better. It was physical. I love football, but I, I, I loved wrestling. Uh, but my antonition, a big impact, would come over again. Why he would do that, I don't know, but he did. Thank you, Mike. Um, somebody from the education department. And for those, a lot of, I know a lot of teachers, and maybe some of you remember Mrs. Keys. Her husband was Mr. Jingling. You remember her? Well, she, she didn't like me. <laughs> But let me tell you why, because I was a little bit of a screw-up. I remember getting recruited, and um, I'd go get pulled out of class. So-and-so, this university's here. And uh, so I got back one time, and I was brought back, and if you remember in the rooms, I don't know if they're like that at the school anymore, but they had this back room, and she pulled me in the back. She goes, you aren't going anywhere if you don't pass my English class. <laughs> I don't care who you are, who you think you are. And, I did pass that class. I quit screwing around in her class. I was afraid to death of her. And then when I went to Purdue, uh, I got an A in English 101 and English 102. I made sure I let her know that it was pretty special. <laughs> so again, uh, I'm a demon forever. I'm proud of it. I'm proud to be associated with this group of winners. We, we had a unique thing at Wesley. Kevin Quigley, a winner. I knew his name. I, I had a fortune. To he came and wrestled with me. He was trying to qualify for the Olympics, and I admired him. Brian Russell was at my table, a, a, a great athlete back then. So many. The Reynolds, 
the Bledsoe's, uh, John uh, Colsar. His dad was my baseball coach. We were all connected, and we got a unique community. Uh, this is a real honor. Thank you very much. I'm very proud of me and my family. Thank you, Paul. Paul, he mentioned growing up in Westlake. So little Paul, back then, lived down the street from us around the corner. So we, did, uh, we didn't beat him up too many times because he got too big and then he started beating us up. <laughs> we'll now move on to our next inductee, uh, Brad Sarankowski. I see him over there. He's our next student presenter and he's gonna present Nick Lawrence. Brad, here you go. My name is Brad Sarankowski and I'm a wrestler on the, or I'm a senior on the wrestling team. It's my pleasure to provide the following information about our 2023 inductee, Mr. Nick Lawrence. Nick Lawrence graduated from Westlake in 2010 where he excelled in wrestling. Nick was a three-time Southwestern Conference champion, one of only three in school history. Nick is also the only wrestler in history in school history to place three times at the state wrestling meet, finishing fifth in 2007 and state runner-up in 2008 and in 2009. He was ranked sixth nationally in the 125-pound weight class. After Westlake, Nick attended Purdue University, where he wrestled for four years. He earned all Big Ten honors and was a D1 NCAA championship qualifier. Nick is married to Bailey and they have two daughters. Please welcome to the podium our next Hall of Fame inductee, Mr. Nick Lawrence. something to say. <laughs> uh, on the way here, I asked my daughter, the one in the, uh, the Elsa dress over there, uh, if she had any ideas of what I should say. She recommended a joke. So I've been uh, sitting over there in that chair thinking of a joke to tell. So would you like to hear one? Yeah. Okay. Why did the chicken cross the road? Why? All the other chickens were prepared for dinner tonight. He crossed Detroit Road very quickly. Uh, in, uh, so I started wrestling when I was five years old. I, uh, in, and actually, my, the year before my senior year at, at Purdue, I, I, I followed in Paul's footsteps. I went to Purdue to wrestle. Um, the year before my senior year in, uh, in college, I almost quit. Not many people know that, uh, but probably would have made for maybe more awkward uh, Hall of Fame and acceptance speech if I did, so luckily I didn't. But uh, in, the, in the next like five minutes or so, I just wanted to pay tribute to the lessons I learned from wrestling and the people that supported me along the way. So to start off, you know, it's cliche to say, but you get, uh, you get what you put into something, obviously. So when you're a kid, everything's kind of black and white, right? So when I was a kid, I just assumed those are the good wrestlers because they're the good ones, these are the average wrestlers because they're the average ones, and these are the bad ones because they're the bad ones. And uh, it wasn't until about sixth grade when my dad started taking me out to extra practices. Right? I was used to going to, to gym, gymnasiums, right, in, in high school gymnasiums. He was taking me out into the middle of nowhere and they were, were just pulling into a barn or a garage and it would be the depths of winter and you'd step onto the wrestling mat and the wrestling mat would be frozen solid. It would be so cold out. Uh, but on top of the mat were all of those great wrestlers that I admired and I just assumed were great. Right? And it took me to, to, to seeing that and actually participating in all of that extra work, uh, you know, going to the extra summer camps, going to the gym with my dad, putting in the extra effort uh, to actually start realizing this is no accident 
right? That, that there are great people in the world and that there are average people in the world. You really, you, you get out what you put into something. So that was the first major takeaway that I got from wrestling. The second uh, major thing from wrestling was the accountability piece. So if you're not familiar with wrestling, every single week you have to make weight and, and it's on the nose. You can't be like in the range, right? You have to be, when I was 103 my freshman year, I had to be 103.0 or less and no, no other exceptions. And wrestling's a unique sport in that sense where other sports, of course, other sports are, are difficult, but we're, with, with wrestling, it never ends. After practice, after the competition, you have to go home and you can't eat much for dinner. Or my, luckily, I had my mom who would, would slave away in the in the uh, in the kitchen and make me make me the meals that I could eat, right? But after practice, when I wanted to drink as much water or Gatorade as I possibly could, I just had to restrain myself, and I and I couldn't. And then come weigh-in time, you have to wring all of the water out of your body, essentially. <laughs> Uh, in order to get down to make weight, and right when you think that you couldn't possibly give uh, or, or lose any more weight, and you step onto the scale and you're 103.2, and everything in, in your body and your mind is telling you to throw in the towel, to just give up, to just stop, to just miss weight this time. And that was one, probably one of the biggest accomplishments that I have, is I, is I never missed weight through my, throughout my entire career, right? And, and when you're when you just dedicate yourself to being accountable to your teammates, to your coaches, to yourself, right? It's a lot easier to accept the suffering that comes with that, that type of accountability. So as much as I wanted to just miss weight and the countless times that that would happen, I would have to put on my already sweaty sweats and, and break, break another sweat to lose that 0.2 pounds to, to, to make weight for my team, my coaches, and myself. So the accountability piece is huge. Um, and, and between just the, the extra hard work, the accountability component, that is going to take, you know, that, that can take you, uh, you, you know, anywhere you want to go. Uh, but ultimately, it's this, the third and final point and the lesson that I learned in life that's, all, that's most important. And that's the people that are in your life, the support network that you have is, is most important. Because, you know, so full circle to my junior year when I wanted to... Uh, you know, just things weren't going my way. I was, you know, I, I was just in a bad place. I wanted to throw in the towel and I wanted to give up. I wanted to stop. And if it wasn't for my wife, who was who, who I was dating at the time at Purdue, if it wasn't, if, if, if she wasn't there with me, I, I wouldn't have made it. Right? I, I wouldn't have been able to do it do it by myself. I would have I would have quit. If it wasn't for my parents' support, I probably would have thrown in the towel. If it wasn't for the call I, I made to my dad. Uh, when I told him I wanted to quit, and he told me to ju just gave me that extra bit of encouragement, just w give it one more year, just give it one more year. And if it wasn't for Coach Ant, uh, it, it, you know, the product of Westlake Wrestling and the mentality of you know, better, be better today than yesterday, if it wasn't for that, I would, I, I probably would have thrown in the towel. And and luckily, because I had that support system, I was able to rally myself. You're right. I, 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 instead of relying on a fire under me. I had the support system to light a fire inside of me. And that senior year at Purdue ended up being the best year of my career. And I went from, again, like being the least dedicated, wanting to quit, to being recognized at uh, the final year banquet as the most dedicated wrestler uh, on, on the Purdue wrestling team that year. And it had nothing to do at that time with, with, with uh, the work or the accountability or, or, or new technique that I, that I had. It had everything to do with the people in my life, the support network I have. So, for, I have some nieces and nephews here. I have my two young daughters. So I, if there was anything I wanted to take away from them, hard work and accountability and accepting the suffering that comes with accountability is gonna take you to where you wanna go. But if you wanna stay there, you need, to rely, you need, a, you need a, a solid support system to, 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 to be able to help you when times get tough, because as we all know, life gets tough. So that's my, my tribute. Honored to be uh, a part of the group of the Westlake Hall of Fame. And, uh, and thank you for, for a great night. Thank you, Nick. Appreciate those comments. And Coach Ant, there you go, huh? Dedicated wrestler there. Our next up is Brogan Hardup, who I know uh, Dana and his family for a long time, and he's going to present Kevin Quigley. So, Brogan, come on up. Hello, uh, my name is.
is Ronan Harup. I'm a senior and I am captain of both our cross country and wrestling team. I also am a runner of our track team. I do NHS and I am a member of Boy Scouts. Uh, it is my pleasure to provide the following information about our next 2023 inductee, Mr. Kevin Quigley. Please don't hurt me, I said your name right. Uh, Kevin Quigley is a 1972 graduate of Westlake High School. Kevin was an outstanding wrestler for Westlake. He was the, the first the first three-time SWC conference champion in our school history. He placed twice at the Ohio High School State Wrestling Championships, runner-up in 1971 and fourth in 1972. Kevin also played football at Westlake. He was the captain and an outstanding nose tackle on the 1971 team. Kevin wrestled at Oklahoma University and then at Ohio State University. He was a national qualifier while wrestling for those schools. Kevin has been a financial advisor for over 40 years and is married to Mary. They have three daughters. Please welcome to the stage our newest Hall of Fame inductee, Mr. Kevin Quigley. I'm really happy to be here, and uh, so let me just jump in. I want to congratulate all the all, all the other inductees, um, especially uh, Scotty Reynolds and Paul Hanna, because they're my contemporaries. Um, thanks to Jimmy Leach, who's done such an outstanding job here over the last several years of really uh, growing the organization, and Jimmy uh, demonstrates great leadership all the time. Mike Antonition, who I know was responsible for me being up here. I appreciate that, Mike. Uh, Bob Stanley, my coach, Kassler. Jim and Annette Tinner, um, John and Paula Mulder, Norm and Pat Mulder. Um, my good friend, Brian Russell. We are still friends, aren't we? <laughs> my favorite brother, David. Uh, my beautiful daughter Chelsea, her husband Scotty, Tinter, and my four grandkids, Camden and Lila and Mr. Grant and uh, Juju, Juliana, that they blessed us with. You know, my friend, I met the crazy uh, grandpa guy that uh, spends a ton of time with the grandkids, and uh, I could <clears throat> never quite put my finger on it, but my friend said to me, you love your children, but you're in love with your grandchildren. And <laughs> that's true. And Jim and Annette Tinner. Did I mention you, Jim? Okay, sorry. I'm slipping already. Anyways, hey, my story is relatively simple, I think. Um, I liked all sports uh, as a youngster, but primarily uh, football and basketball, believe it or not, in junior high, high school. In the year 2000, George Clooney had a, a pretty interesting movie uh, called The Perfect Storm where there were a rare culmination of crazy weather events. If you saw the movie and they ended up losing their ship. Uh, and that was a disaster for them. Fortunately, my perfect storm uh, happened in 10th grade and it could not have turned out better. So backing up, I played basketball in seventh, eighth, ninth, and, and started out in 10th grade. I had two great coaches back there, uh, Coach Lenny Sywick and Denny Godolik. And uh, it's funny what you remember about your coaches. Uh, with Coach Sywick, if he ever gave up the baseline, he'd burst into flames. He was a fiery guy. <laughs> and Denny Godolik uh, was a great coach as well. And I don't know why, he always called me piano legs. Uh, uh, I don't know if we had a winning or losing season. I do remember being called piano legs. I assumed it was a compliment, but I'm not exactly sure <laughs> about that. Um, so 10th grade and high school rolls around. I'm starting out with the basketball team again with a new coach, Frank Phillips. And about two weeks into the preseason, after practice, I knock on his door uh, to inquire about uh, my future. Um, <laughs> I was never exactly a starter in basketball, which is probably surprising to everybody. But, um, so I asked him how the future was looking for me, and he sat there for a moment with a blank stare and told me, Kevin, there'll be a little involvement for you in the team. And, uh, you know, I wasn't uh, mad or upset. Um, 
we parted company and at that point in time the only other uh, game in town the only other sport of course was wrestling and that's how it began so I just jumped in and uh, I absolutely knew nothing about the sport you know like most people I thought wrestling was just two guys rolling around and uh, as a side note I thought it was interesting here tonight that of the athletes Paul was a wrestler um, Nick was a wrestler I'm a wrestler wrestlers are the majority I think of the group here tonight so that must mean something Bob um, What I remember about that very beginning was my very first match. Uh, I'd only been wrestling about two months. I felt like I knew literally nothing. We were wrestling Hawkins High School on the east side of Cleveland. And what I do remember is I was so nervous. I, you know, I didn't know if I was going to pass out or, or throw up. Uh, I remember Coach Kassler walking me to the edge of the mat and barking in my ear. And I don't remember exactly what he said. He probably said, uh, don't get pinned. Uh, my first match, <laughs> but uh, uh, I remember that, that, that winning that match and, and that the amazing feeling of, of, of winning and having your arm raised and for the very first time and that's really what hooked me on wrestling. Uh, coach Kassler and, and the other, uh, our other coach Steve Craycraft really created a great environment um, of hard work and hard practices, and those commands were passed on to the team leaders like Brian Russell, who conveyed it to the, uh, to the rest of the team, and we just had a, a tremendous environment. That first year really laid the foundation for me. Uh, we won most of the time. I'll never forget the team meetings at Coach Kassler's house uh, when his wife would be cooking uh, bacon and eggs and toast and tea. And guys like Joey Mann and Steve Crumroy and Matt LeBoy that cut a lot of weight would uh, anxiously be awaiting for a few crumbs to drop on their plate. Um, another classic was uh, when tournaments rolled around, Coach Kassler <laughs> wanted us to sleep over at his house because he thought there would be too many distractions if we stayed at home. And so why he had me and Brian Russell sleeping in the same room, I'm not exactly sure. But I do remember numerous times him bursting in the door, uh, yelling at us to shut up and go to sleep. Um, and I remember at the end of the season, we had a great time out at his place uh, playing softball. And, and again, it was just the, the, the team chemistry and the environment was fantastic. I was able to play second in the state tournament my second year, fourth my senior year. You know, Norm, I should have done that in reverse order, but uh, it was second and fourth. And then college rolled around, and I got a lot of phone calls and letters from coaches. Um, <laughs> for some reason, I was enamored with Lehigh College. Uh, Thad Turner was the coach, and I sent him a letter telling him I was really interested in the program, and he sent me a letter back saying, uh, Kevin, you don't need to apply. We looked at your GPA, and I don't think you'd make it at Lehigh. I didn't realize it was an academic school. Um, <laughs> Coach Steve Craycraft uh, had a friend who was a coach at Princeton, if you can believe this story. And I received a letter from Princeton <laughs> University telling me they'd give me a four-year scholarship if I'd commit to them for four years. And I'm embarrassed to tell you the reason that didn't transpire is because the application was 12 pages and they wanted it to be typed and I just wasn't up to the task. <laughs> and uh, so, <laughs> you know, I just couldn't see myself with a pipe and an ascot at Princeton. Uh, So anyway, Stan Abel was at Cal uh, uh, Cincinnati. The coach of Cincinnati called me up, offered me a scholarship. He was going to come up and talk to us. A week later, he accepts a job at Colorado. He's going to offer me the same uh, scholarship and so forth. And he said he'll be out to the house in a week to visit with my folks. And in between that period of time, he went from Cincinnati to Colorado to Oklahoma, which was his alma mater. And he comes into the house and tells us that, that Oklahoma and that whole story. And I actually, for a quick minute, was disappointed. I mean, Colorado sounded like fun. Oklahoma had absolutely no 
concept of what that might be like. You know, I honestly, I thought it was oil wells and Indians. And, uh, but in any event, I went out to Oklahoma and uh, I liked Oklahoma. Great people, great fun. I placed third the Big Eight. It was a good time. I just didn't get along with Coach Abel very well, so I transferred to Ohio State, the Ohio State, and Ohio State was nothing but fun. Um, redshirted my sophomore year, wrestled the next three years, captain the team my junior and senior year, won most of my matches, uh, placed in the Big Eight, the Big Ten, uh, every year that I was eligible there. So to conclude this and wrap this up, my perfect storm that I mentioned earlier was this. Um, leaving the basketball team, number one, having a great team, great teammates, and a great and great chemistry to plug into as as a, as a young wrestler, and having a great coach. I had a handful of coaches at Oklahoma and a handful of coaches at Ohio State, but my best and most impactful coach was Coach Kassler. <coughs> In closing. Uh, because I decided to wrestle, uh, that really had an impact on my life. If I had stayed in basketball, which I could have done, it was easy, my friends were there and so forth, um, but if I had stayed, there'd be no wrestling. And if there was no wrestling, there'd be no scholarship, there'd be no Oklahoma, there'd be no Ohio State. Uh, because I went to Ohio State um, upon my graduation, uh, doors in that arena opened up for me. I coached with uh, Howard Ferguson uh, the very first year they won their state tournament in 1978. Howard Ferguson, Tom Kuzno, and Joe Mackey owned the first two Nautilus franchises on the west side of uh, Cleveland, and I ran those for them because of wrestling and so forth. And so that was another door that was opened up through wrestling. At Nautilus, I met Norm Mulder, my, my good friend. Uh, Norm hired me into Primerica in the financial services industry, which I've been in now for a quick 43 years. Uh, a lot of people say they'll never talk about politics and religion. I'll, I'll talk about anything. I think anything's fun to talk about. Norm and I were going on a call one day in his car, and we were just talking about politics and religion. And uh, he asked me a crazy question. He said, if you died uh, today, would you go to heaven? And I said, I, I hope, or I think, or some crazy thing like that. And then, anyways, that got the wheel spinning and me thinking about, it, it led me into Christianity and the relationship with Christ. Um, but for these reasons, I say wrestling took me down a path that changed my life. I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here. Uh, and again, thanks to Coach Kassler. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate that. Before we introduce our next inductee, which is Scott Reynolds, and I'll in introduce Tommy Garland. Um, Scott wasn't feeling well earlier tonight, so we will get um, Tommy to introduce Scott on his bio, and then I'm gonna have his brother Parker stop and say a couple words on behalf of Scotty, but uh, he wasn't feeling well and he had to leave. So uh, Tommy Garland, if you'd come forth as our next super, super senior, and he will introduce Scott Reynolds. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Tommy Garland. I am a senior at Westlake High School, and I am a member of the football team. And it's my pleasure to provide the following information tonight about Mr. Scott Reynolds. Scott graduated from Westlake High School in 1971. He was an outstanding student athlete during his years at Westlake as he played football, basketball, and track. The football team in 1970 was co-champs of the Southwest Conference and gave up only 24 points in nine games, which included six shutouts. During the time he spent on the team, Scott was first all-conference, the most valuable player of the SWC, the only offensive and defensive lineman to ever receive that recognition. 
and he was selected for the All-Ohio team and was a participant in the North-South football game. He then was selected to the All-American high school football team, the only football player at Westlake High School to ever receive that, dis that distinction. During his track years, he, only, he combined with his brother Parker and John Bledsoe to set the state record for the shot put relay. Scott went on to play football at Northwestern University and graduated in 1975. Scott is married to Barbara and he has five children with her. Please welcome to the podium our newest member of the Westlake Hall of Fame, Mr. Scott Reynolds, but his brother. This is something that he's been looking forward to. So uh, anyhow, that, that's the story. We want to thank you for the award. And uh, he, he just uh, pleased as can be. So thank you. It was too bad about Scott, I could tell you this, over the last you know, couple of months, you get to meet all the inductees quite a bit, and um, as a young kid growing up in Westlake, um, the Reynolds family was you know, one of those families that you always heard about. And so I, I knew of Parker, and I knew, got to meet Scott over the last couple of months, and it's really been a pleasure. So was, I was ashamed that um, Scotty couldn't be here, but I know how touched he's been over the last couple of months leading up to tonight. So we'll keep him in our prayers and uh, I'll make sure we check on them and make sure everything's okay. Our final inductee tonight is the 1983 football team. One of the co-captains, Mike Larry, will represent the team in talking, and uh, we're gonna call on uh, Cooper Rummel to introduce the 1983 football team. And just real quick, I wanna thank everyone. We've had nine inductees, which is more than normal. We really have moved along. I appreciate everyone's cooperation. It's been a great night. I will have some closing comments when we're done, but I'll turn it over to Cooper, and he can introduce uh, Mike and the 1983 football team. Cooper, here you go. Uh, hello, my name is Cooper Rummel, and I'm a senior football captain. Uh, tonight, it's my pleasure to provide the following about our 2023 inductee, the 1983 football team. The 1983 football team had a perfect 10-0 regular season only the second undefeated football season in school history. Fellow inductee, Coach Vern Long, was the head coach. This team was Southwest Conference champions and became the first Westlake football team and the first Southwest Conference team to qualify for the state football playoffs. They outscored their opponents in the 10 regular season games, 237 points to only 36, which included five shutouts. Four members of this team were selected for All-State honors that season. Since graduation, in memory of their fallen teammates, this team established the Jim Given Memorial Scholarship and have awarded a scholarship to a deserving Westlake senior for the past 20 years. 
Please welcome to the podium Mike Lairway, one of the captains of the 1983 team, to accept their induction into the Westlake Hall of Fame. Hey, thank you, Tom. It's my honor to present the 1983 Westlake Demons 10 0 season. There they are. <laughs> All 56 members. It's hard to believe this 40 years has passed. And that's a picture back when we all had hair. <laughs> Looking pretty good. That's what the high school looked back then. I know times have changed, but that was home for us. And that coach right there, Coach Long. The winningest coach in the history of Westlake football. Coach Long was a young 35 at that time. And he embraced us. And I'm embracing Tom Liebig to come here as we scroll through this. That is the staff assembled by Coach Long. How lucky were we to have those members? And all seven are now in their 60s and 70s, all still living, all here tonight. We are honored to have them here with us. Thank you, coaches. As we move on, we wanted to share our, our quote to the plaque and if you know the guys on the team were all very close remain close and uh, when Jimmy called and said we need a quote for the plaque of course social media today we used it and uh, we sent several e emails back and forth about four days until we finally f finished and we caught up on this quote that we learned from the coaches and coaches we changed our lives and you mean so much to us, but this quote is what we came up with, and it has to do with you. Football is the ultimate team sport, where you learn to be a teammate and a friend for life. Thank you, coaches. This couldn't be more true. Pause now as we list the roster. That's everyone. I couldn't do this without acknowledging them all. As we started through the season, there were a couple of turning points, and I think Kevin quickly alluded to it, and you get that chemistry, and you get everybody together on one same page. And it's hard to do that, and Coach Long was successful. But it didn't come without a lot of hard work and determination. And we had one scrimmage as we were going in, and that was against university school. And they were very talented. They had our way, their way with us. They went up and down the field in this scrimmage. And we came off the field, and Richie Heidenreich, co-captain, um, Richie called everybody together, and Richie set us straight. We had all this talent, all this talent, but it wasn't, it wasn't happening on the field. And thank you, Richie, for that moment where you took us, and, and he, he set us straight. Much appreciated. There was one other moment that I be remiss if I didn't mention, and that was uh, the time at practice when Coach Newman, and you heard earlier, recognized as one of those disciplinarian coaches. And Coach Newman set us straight as well. We had gone through a quick practice, and this was several days after the university school scrimmage, and Coach got us together, and he lined us up on that. We, we had finished the practice, and start right there. He lined us up on the baseball field where the fence was across from the practice field. 
And he ripped into us and he let us know how much talent we had on this team. But it wasn't on the field right then. And we were, going, we were about to waste all that talent. And coach was frustrated and he lit us up. And he said, I want you guys to take 20 minutes. You're gonna water up and we're gonna do another practice all over again. We're gonna start from scratch. So we all kind of looked around at each other. We sat on that fence and all of a sudden, if you remember, the weight room was right there by the baseball field. Around the corner on this big boom box, carrying this big boom box was Carrie Blakemore and Blakes was there. And there was Carrie playing the song of that summer. Remember 1983, it was a John Cougar song, Jack and Diane. As, as Carrie did that, we all laughed. And then uh, we kind of got together and we went out and we had that practice that coach wanted. It was so crisp, so sharp. It was everything that we were capable of. And it all began to come together. As you see, we finished that season 10 and 0. Proud to say that. And then if you look at the points scored against 137, and we gave up 36. As the season grew, you saw the fans. It was packed. Reed Field, everybody was coming to watch the Demons and to see if we could complete the perfect season. And there they are, the guys. And there's the girlfriend up there too, right? <laughs> Everybody had a high school sweetheart, right? There she is. But as we won, there it was. We'd come off the field and, man, we, we came together. The chemistry that, that Quigley talked about was all there. And of course, you have a, root, a unicorn, and that's a sports term, on every football team. And our unicorn was a Wolverine. Sorry, Kalpana, but we were going blue back then. And that's Johnny Colasai. He did a great job for us. And you handed it to him and anything could happen. And the squad as it came through. These are the final AP rankings. And back then, this is 1983, they ranked every school the same. So you see Cincinnati Moeller ranked number one. That is no joke. And we were 15th in the state. Proud to be in there as an undefeated team. We also completed that season by bypassing the 7-0 1945 team. We had Louis Duchesne visit us, who was 80 at the time. He came to our practice as we approached the 7-0 record that he made us well aware of that we were coming up on. And he pointed out, this guy which just went rogue, and he's like, you guys have no idea. I didn't have any coaches I had. It was just me, and we're like, coach, coach, hold on. We're good, we're all one. It, it kind of pushed us to that last level where we needed those last three wins and focused. And we appreciate Lou Duchesne. The, the field is named after Coach Duche in his honor. The Demonettes, where you could always find Wade and Johnny up at Queen Anne's looking for them. Or you could take them over to Bay Landings, where they might find Melissa Koning as a lifeguard. Those guys were crazy, but part of the team. So, what are we doing now? Well, we're all in our 50s, and we do a 50-year-old loop. We bowl, <laughs> but we do it for a good cause. We came together about 20 years ago, and we had lost Jim Gibbon, who was a year older of, than us, and uh, Jimmy, at the age of 27, was stricken with ALS. He was a leader to us, and we wanted to do something to recognize Jim. We came with the Jimmy Given Scholarship awarded to a senior 
each year now. And it could be a, a female, it could be a male. And we encourage everyone, and we're going we're to assign you to this, Cooper, where you take this message back to the squad and let them know that these scholarships, Craig Thompson and Jimmy Given, are out there. We now award 2500 for the Jimmy Given. That's a nice little chunk. And we're honored to do that. A few years back, we got Cal Given, who was in Boston at the time, had, and he was three years old when Jim passed. Had no idea that we had been doing this in honor of his dad. We were able to get through social media with Cal and get him back. He now comes back every year to bowl with us in honor of his dad. Love to have Cal back. And are you, we also recognize, that's, a, that's Joe, Logan Paul right there. And Logan Paul graduated in 2013, wanted to recognize that back then we handpicked Logan Paul as our winner for the Jimmy Given Award. We, we honored him with, at the time, was $1,500. So as this Logan Paul goes on and starts making some money, we're like, hey, any chance you can give back? You can give some of this back now, Logan, that you're doing so well. And it was very nice. His mom came to the bowling tournament, and she does now every year. And she gave us a check from Logan for $3,000. So she doubled up on that, and it helps fund that again. We've got one thing, a little prop up here. I'm hoping it's still here. We doing all right on time, Jimmy? We're gonna hook. You got the hook out. One thing, one thing. So we're we we close out the season. We're we're ten and zero. We beat um, Homestead Falls. We get back into the locker room, and as we get in before we left for the game, this is because we were cocky too. We knew we were gonna win that last game. All right. So. Blake, Kerry Blakemore, he goes and he buys non-alcohol champagne bottles, okay? And he's like, guys, I want you to have this. When we get back, we're gonna spray them out, right? So we get into the locker room and we start spraying the bottles. And Coach Long, bless his heart, thinks there's alcohol in them. And he's like, you guys can't do that. So he starts getting all the coaches, get those bottles back. I want every bottle. I want every bottle back. There's alcohol in there. We got, we're looking at the state playoffs. Get, there, get those bottles. Well, coach, I kept this bottle. <laughs> I kept this bottle for 40 years for tonight. We're going to fill this bottle up when we get over there to Time Warp. We'd like to invite everybody there where we'll show the 30-minute highlight reel of our season. We'd love to have you guys there. On top of that, we've got footage of Kevin Quigley from 19... Kevin, you were pretty good. <laughs> we got some footage up there. Tonight, we're going to show it when we get over to Time Warp of you. 30, and the, the match lasted three minutes and 28 seconds. We're wondering what took you so long. But, uh, but it's great. It's going to have you. And it's in honor of Don Williams. If you, everybody remembers Donnie passed away. Don Williams left all of his footage in my care. And I, and I plan to give that to, back to WHBS. So anybody in the 70s, 80 range, good chance you got some footage coming. And, we, we plan to donate, donate that, like I said, to WHBS. Hey, guys, thank you so much to the team. Thank you. All you guys. All you guys. Thank you. Before we conclude, just some quick things. Um, there's three or four announcements. One thing, I, uh, I was fortunate enough to coach under Coach Long at Westlake during those years. and. Uh, those guys were lights out. They were, uh, they were tough. Some different things. 
I want to thank the students. We started that three years ago to have the students do the bios. I think it's awesome. I really do. So thanks to all the students back there. Right after we're done, we'd like the 1983 team who's ever here to be back there in the corner for a picture. I also want any of the former inductees. I read 13 names tonight. We want to get a picture of you before you leave. If you can believe this, there's dessert in the hallway, so put it in your purse or your pocket. Just don't forget it. But uh, you can take dessert that's out uh, there. I gave the plaques to each of the inductees. Those are the plaques that go on the wall at Westlake High School. So do not take those home tonight. You need to return those to me. So if you want to take a picture with, you, take, with your plaque, do so. But you'll have, John, you're going to have a missing block on the wall if you take that to Dayton with you. So you need to return that. Um, I want everyone to come next year. I'm trying to make this where you may know an inductee, you may not know an inductee. But I want you here to come and celebrate Westlake Pride. And with that, thank you for coming. And as Mike said, I'm buying beers at Time Warp. All right.